if you were describing uh, who you are and where you're at, where would you start? I'm a registered dietitian and sports nutritionist by background. And um, throughout all of my dietitian career, I've worked with professional athletes from Olympic Games to rugby players and was continuously being asked for healthy desserts. So um, about 18 months ago, I decided to create a healthy dessert. So I um, set up my own company, Pow Cow, um, and we are a high protein, low sugar frozen yogurt. Brilliant. Okay, and tell me, like, whereabouts are you with your business at the moment? Yeah, so right now we're uh, trading just um, over 12 months, um, and we are currently in approximately 250 stores in Ireland, um, expanding into the UK, um, and we are launching in the States later this year, as well as potentially in the Middle East. All after only 12 months. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. It's been a busy 12 months. Yeah, that's <laughs> fast. That's really, really fast. Yeah. It's great though. Yeah, it's great. I guess um, we've had a couple of good breaks um, and I'm probably a man of impatience. So uh, the quicker these things happen, the better. So. Well, can I ask, get into any business within 18 months to the point where it's expanding out <coughs> into multiple countries all at once must have posed a whole lot of challenges. Can I, I always think when you mention that word like challenge, what comes to mind or what was kind of the roughest patch in getting you to where you are right now? If I go back to October uh, 2016, so um, we would have, I would have initially launched the product onto the market in a couple of select stores in Dublin and got some feedback and stuff and we were producing it in a small factory in Offaly and um, I would have had a lot of, um, so a lot of consumers were saying they liked the product but we were, I was producing it, then driving from Offaly up to Dublin delivering it, then going doing tastings and driving back down. So at that stage I kind of knew right well this is unmanageable myself. So. The biggest challenge that preceded that was trying to find somebody who had the faith in us and in the product to take us on. So we had to get a manufacturer to help us to kind of grow and scale the business. Mm. And I spent a long, long time trying to convince people that this was a product that was going to work. I, I'm just shocked that you'd actually have to sell the concept of a high protein, low sugar ice cream because <coughs> it just seems so obvious. You would think so. but. Um, manufacturers don't necessarily like to go outside their realms of what they normally do. Comfort zones, yeah, Comf yeah, 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 exactly. Their comfort zones. So we st and the, our recipe is a slightly different process to what they may be used to. Um, and I guess as well, you have to respect them in that they have people coming to them once, twice a week with the next big idea, um, and they kind of learn, I guess, to kind of shut down a bit. So really, it took. It was really about, I guess, uh, relationship building with these people and persistence on my part. So I'm definitely a firm believer of for every no you get, you're closer to a yes. And I really think that, you know, persistence and continuing to move on to the next one and draw a line and say, okay, that person is not going to be a partner, but somebody will at some point. You just have to keep going and exhausting every single avenue, no matter what it takes. So eventually we got there and we have, a manufacturing partner now who I literally could not be without. They're fantastic. Because um, in like your space, your manufacturing par partner is really your foundation of everything. Absolutely everything. Everything's yeah. built on uh, off the back of them, really. Yeah. So that's the key key partnership you have to start with. Absolutely. I mean, if you don't have them, if unless you manufacture it yourself, if you don't have a manufacturing partner, then you don't have a product. And you know, being in the food business talking to lots and lots of food companies that are um, earlier stage than me and slightly more advanced than me. An awful lot of people have problems with their manufacturers in them executing you know, what their vision and dream of the product is. And as well, quality is a big thing too. So you, know, you run the risk quite a lot with going to some larger manufacturers where the quality may suffer as the product grows. Mm. Um, and you know, it took us a long time, and I suppose that was a real challenge and a real long road for me, but I think we probably came out trumps in terms of finding that perfect partner. Because um, like for, like, so, so I, I'd be familiar with a lot of people in your space, <clears throat> and for so many of them, they have so many issues with that production partner or that manufacturing partner. Yeah. So really, like, if you're trying to get started in, in following, say, a similar path to yourself, almost before you even 
before you even think of starting, you want to make sure you have a rock solid partnership in place with the manufacturer. Yeah, sh absolutely. And I think as well, people think that because they make a recipe in their kitchen, well, that's what I thought, because I made a recipe in my kitchen with the 1299 uh, ice cream machine that I bought on offer from Lidl, that uh, this was okay, that this recipe could just be copied and pasted and made from, you know, f one liter to 5,000 liters. And that is not the case. There's a lot of stuff that has to happen in order for recipes to scale. So I think people get run away with an idea whereby they make it on a micro scale and then when they need to get to that next stage, it sometimes can all fall apart. I think the funny thing in entrepreneurship where they all talk about like the key skill that you need is persistence. Mm. But to persevere, you really need to be on top of yourself mentally because it's so challenging, all those obstacles, whether it's you know, with a, a, an ingredient, uh, sorry, a recipe that doesn't scale or yeah. a manufacturing partner that might not want, uh, sorry, not, might not be able to scale or might not want you to use the same ingredients that you're using yeah. that makes your product as it should be. Yeah, yeah. Like to actually work on yourself to get through all those hurdles, I think is challenging. Yeah, I know, and um, I suppose you were on about the challenge at the beginning, and when I was talking about that manufacturing, when we started off in a very small, when I was making it myself, and actually, it's very true, but you have to look after yourself, because I ended up having a lot of back problems, and ended up having a herniated disc, so spent a good four months in bed, and like drugged up to my eyeballs, just S trying to... Specifically work-related? Probably an element of like genetics there as well. Yeah. So we've like a history of families of bad backs and probably me doing heavy lifting in a manufacturing capacity, capacity was probably not the best thing to do in hindsight. Um, so I ended up getting a herniated disc and then the business just had to stop. So like... It's funny you touched on working with Olympians and working with athletes at the start. Yeah. And like for me, I believe that if you want to be successful in business, you have to train yourself similarly and yeah. discipline yourself si similarly to achieve the success that you want. But it's on the flip side of that, I'm, like work related injuries, mm. entrepreneurially related injuries yeah. happen. Like, uh, yeah, and it's not as I go for, as I'm going further into this journey with the company. I think uh, it's the more I realize, the more you have to look after yourself. And if it's not both physically and mentally, so for me now, I'm finding it if like if I don't take a proper break from everything, like your head will just explode, and you'll also fall out of love with it. Mm -hmm. So I know if I have a heavy few weeks where it's literally day in day out, there's problems or there's challenges or you know you're late on a delivery or tubs don't arrive in the time they're supposed to arrive or you're trying to get a new account, and then I'll be fine, and then I'm working over the weekend, and then you're going back into it on Monday. At, that point, you know, there has to be a point where you say, no, I'm actually like, as a human being, I need to like break because <laughs> you cannot keep going. You'll just burn out. And it's the thing you hear time and time again from all the podcasts, from all of those, you know, entrepreneurs that have hundreds of millions in turnover, they will all say the same thing, that if you don't look after yourself, and you'll just get a burnout. And if you burn out, then everything, the business just goes yeah. AWOL. Like. I've been hammering this quote all about, like you have, you're looking after yourself, uh, <coughs> that whatever about being successful professionally, if you aren't successful with yourself personally, yeah. uh, you don't have a chance of, of being successful professionally. And it's just, it's, it's fact. Yeah. It's, and, it, and so again, it kind of goes back to that, like almost treating yourself like an athlete, looking after yourself on that same level, planning, yeah. scheduling your time all to suit the outcome that you want, which is really challenging. Like that, that stat that like nine out of 10 businesses fail in their first year. Yeah. Like you suddenly re start realizing like all the odds are stacked against entrepreneurial success. Yeah, and I think the statistics then as well around a lot of entrepreneurs, like it's one of the one professions where they have the highest rate of mental health issues. Cause you're on this continuous roller coaster of like a high versus a low. Like for example, a day last week, I got a phone call in the morning, we're supposed to have tubs being delivered in for an order. The tubs didn't come in on time. This was at like 9 a.m. But then by, so I was like, oh my God, what the hell am I going to do? Then by 12 o'clock, we had got a really good sales breakthrough. So you're on a high. And then something else happened in the evening where you're like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> so, no, no, and that's I, like one day. Yeah. So it's like, you have to be able to move away and switch off from it or else you just go into like, you'd end up going into a crazy spin, like. So, so can I ask, so somebody in that kind of crazy spin where they're going up and down and down, up and down, how do you actually look after you? 
Um, I, every weekend, well, with the exception of an odd weekend, but every weekend I have to take a break where literally the laptop goes away, the phone emails are turned off on Friday. And uh, for me, it's very much trying to get out of the city as well. So uh, I'm from Mayo, so uh, lots of beaches and stuff down there. So even if it's just a case of getting down there, you know, going for a walk or run on the beach or something and just taking chill out time yeah. and even sitting down and watching crappy television for like two hours. That's its purpose. <laughs> That's its purpose yeah. yeah. Um, I think then as well on a daily basis, I think it's important to try and get some form of exercise in. So, I mean, you know, it doesn't necessarily need to be the gym, but you know, if it's a run or a walk or whatever, but I do think it's important to take those 40 minutes to an hour every day. Um, and like, it's a funny thing when you're personally training, not for aesthetics, yeah, yeah, yeah. not for anybody else, but just for your own mental sanity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Weird, but it, yeah. it's the case. But it's the case. And I think a lot of people are just get caught in a rat race and just don't do it or think that they'll do it the next day or whatever, or the weather's crap out. So, but I do think it, it improves your overall mind frame and your overall kind of positivity. And I think it really shapes everything. Do you know what I mean? So. Well, can I ask, I'm going to pull you right back into your business because the whole reason I kind of wanted to do these interviews is that mm. I thought, well, actually, it started with myself that I was like, look, I'm going to share the experiences I'm having in business so that hopefully uh, somebody following similar if similar path can watch on, learn some of the lessons I've had to at my expense mm. and speed up their entrepreneurial journey off the back of it. And so I did that with myself until I kind of ran out of lessons. And then I thought, hey, I'll start linking in with guys <laughs> like yourself. And... If somebody, can I ask, was following on in your footsteps, right? And your footsteps, to be fair, your journey has gone really fast. Um, but it's always interesting. Like, I imagine you could look back at the journey you've taken and said, well, if I made that change, that change, that change, things would have gone faster and more, possibly be more profitable. Yeah. So if, for example, say you got the opportunity to talk to somebody who's just about to start or who's <coughs> thinking about uh, following in a similar kind of path, if you were to give them one or two nuggets of advice that would stand to them from your experiences, what would you say? Um, if, for example, there was a food entrepreneur um, coming behind or came to talk to me, I would definitely say you need to look at the, at the product that you have holistically. So you need to fundamentally answer the question, is this something the consumer wants? Like not just something you think is a good idea, but is it definitely something the consumer wants? And then I guess you really need to bore down to practicalities. So, you know, is it easy to distribute this product? Will it be easy to get it in a place where consumers are going to see this product? Is it easy to manufacture this product? Is it easy to scale this product? Well, I guess the question is not, is it easy, but how easy is it? So for example, we're a frozen product. Distribution is an absolute nightmare for us. We're very, very limited in the people that we can work with. Um, there's a lot of expenses associated with frozen distribution. When we're looking at exporting to the likes of the Middle East and stuff, the costs that are potentially incurred with that are quite, have a big impact on our profitability. So, you know, if I was to start again, would I do frozen? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but really, if there was somebody to sit down, I would say, you know, you need to look at the whole sphere of this, um, and, and approach it very much in a holistic way and, and consider all angles in terms of your, does your cons consumer want it? How do you get it to the consumer? You know, how easy is it to consume? And you know, that's a big thing as well for us. So um, if you have a bar or something, it's easy. It's a, something you pick up on a daily basis. You eat it on the go. Yeah. You know, people go through a lot of bars. How often do some, does somebody buy a large tub of ice cream? It's interesting thinking about like the success of Fulfill, like the success of Fulfill as a rollout has just been un unbelievable to follow. And I think it's, it's massively down to obviously them taking a lot of those boxes in, yeah. in terms of storage, in terms of distribution, in terms of interest and mm. market shift. Like it, it was well-timed, well-executed and then massively well-supported. Absolutely. And I mean, they've done a fantastic job as an Irish brand growing the product to where it is today. Like they're definitely the unicorn of um, Irish food startups anyway at, at the pre at present. Um, Along with yourself, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like massively, like, yeah. you know, I think a 15, a 15, sorry, a 16 month turnaround, um, sorry, 
18 month turnaround. Um, but to be expanding into multiple markets all at the same time, is, it, it's pretty incredible. And yeah. it's seriously demanding, but yeah. pretty incredible. Yeah, yeah, I know it is. I, um, but like I said, I'm very impatient. So it's probably a lot to do with my personality. <laughs> but uh, It's funny for me, a lot of the time when I, like, it's only I actually appreciate the journey when I take a pause, like one of those, mm. you know, if it's even just a weekend away or some time yeah. away, that I can actually look at what I've done and go, wow, that was deadly. Yeah, yeah. I imagine you find that maybe a little challenging as well, because I, I, looking on, certainly, it's really impressive. Certainly on those breaks away from work, it is uh, good to think back and reflect and stuff and say, wow, we have gone quite a long way in the last few months. Um, but again, you always have that thing as an entrepreneur where you're like, okay, great, we've gone so far, but if, what's going to happen tomorrow? Like, are we going to lose one of those big accounts? Or maybe the Middle East won't come across the line? Or So there's nearly always that sense of, I wouldn't say uh, pe being pessimistic, but you're just kind of always cautious as well. And it guards up. Yeah. Um, uh, but, you know, I guess it's not a bad way to be either because I guess I've gone through so many stages where you've gone, been so close to deals and the deals haven't come through or, you know, you've had, you think you've got a manufacturer and you haven't got a manufacturer and then that puts you back four months or... Can, can, can I pull you up on that point? Because, yeah. like, you know, you talked about, look, being impatient, um, persevering, um, but when you get hit, <clears throat> I kind of like to describe it as getting literally hit by a baseball bat, uh, because generally speaking, it happens uh, several times every day. Uh, <laughs> but how do you strengthen yourself? Because, like, you know, there are some big obstacles um, and they can be really, really mentally challenging. And I, as I said, I think mindset and working on yourself is the most important thing for any entrepreneur to do. Um, when you, when the shit hits the fan for you, how do you gain strength or how do you pull yourself over it? Within Pauka, I'm a very big believer in uh, personalities and the way that different personalities work. And I'm very much, so we've done, all of our employees in Pauka are doing a personality test. Mm -hmm. um, don't know if that's the right PC <laughs> phrase for it, but no, 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 everybody it's... does kind of before they come into the company will do like a. If there's a free one that you can do online, it's the <coughs> Myers the. Um, yeah, I cannot think. Of, uh, it's H H B D I is the one that we have used, uh, and it basically divides people's personalities into four different spheres. So you know, you could be uh, organ uh, organized and analytical as one sphere. Um, compassionate and caring is another sphere, um, imaginative and creative is another sphere, and another sphere is uh, process and kind of bureaucracy. So I am very much lean towards the um, analytical and um, bureaucracy thing, which is actually quite unusual for an entrepreneur to be sitting there. Mm -hmm. So when the shit hits the fan, I very much kind of distance emotions a little bit from the actual scenario yeah. because I don't see it as a no, just because somebody doesn't like the product, it's no reflection on me as a person um, because I know that there are people out there that do like the product. So for me, I kind of nearly switch and be like, okay, right, so that account was going to be worth X. So now we need to find an equivalent account or an equivalent sales lead or an equivalent, whatever the case may be. So you just pull all emotion out of it and just go very, think very, very functionally. Yeah, I think it's important. So, you know, I've worked in big corporations before this and you see CEOs of like these multinational conglomerates and they don't really care about the actual, well, you know, personally care about the actual product that they may be selling or whatever. They see it very much in a business sense. And it's important, I think, yes, absolutely, I very much care about the product that we've created and what we're doing, but I don't see it being a direct attack on or a direct disappointment to me personally. It need, it's a disappointment for what Pau Cao, if it takes on its own personality. Right. You feel bad for the actual product, but you know at the same time, it's your job then to try and pull yourself away emotionally a little bit from that and just figure out what the next steps. So whenever the shit hits the fan, basically take a step back, <coughs> release the emotion, yeah. um, look at things very, very functionally, yeah. and address then from there rather than just getting caught up in the moment and flaring up. Or yeah, and like I mean, that. as a human, when you do get that email in being like, sorry, this is not of interest to us, of course you have like 10, 15 minutes where you're like, oh God, but like, just go get a coffee. I'm very, very, uh, I find that I'm a very practical person. So I'm like, you know, go take a break and they'd be like, right, okay, that's that done. What is, what do we need to do to find something else or 
somebody else to replace that? For me in that space, it's to try and look at everything in a long-term sense mm. rather than a short-term <coughs> sense. Because like when you look at it, like whenever you hit an obstacle, in a short-term sense, it's a pain in the ass. But in a long-term sense, it's a bit of prep to ensure your smooth success thereafter. Yeah. And I, I think, so I try and like pull myself away similarly, not get tied up into where it's at in the short term, yeah. arm myself more so in, in the long long term. It's really, really interesting because we all we, we all ultimately have to move forward. Yeah. Um, how we all do it individually is, I think, really interesting. Yeah, and I think it's probably changed for me as well. The more I go through it, the more no's you get. You kind of, you nearly get used to it to an extent. A little bit, yeah, 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 like I suppose. So now I would see myself as being much more practical probably than maybe at the very beginning because you're, you know, before you even get into a shop and then you go to your first shop and the first guy says, nah, that's not going to sell. And then you're like, oh, God. But now you're like, okay, you've, you've like you said, distanced yourself from it a little bit. And I am definitely a strong believer. I know I've said it previously, but I do feel that every no is a closer, one step closer to a yes, and you just have to keep going. Yeah, um. wow! I love that. Isn't it KFC um, Colonel Sanders that literally went to like a, th a thousand plus people with his recipe before <laughs> yeah, anybody yeah. took him seriously? Yeah, mad. I yeah. think that level of uh, commitment and persistence. I guess it keeps coming. I know it keeps going back to the persistence thing, but I do think it is it seems to be a similar th trait that a lot of people have. Like. Do you know, like, it, it is. Like, I, I think it's, it's, it's popularised because of Steve Jobs' quote. You know, he says, you have to love what you, can, uh, what you do, mm. otherwise you won't be able to persevere. Yeah. Uh, in business, you have to persevere for success. The thing is, um, whatever about loving uh, what you do, I think, like, there, there's a lot of work in terms of your own he headspace and, like, what you talked about, not getting too over-involved, mm. detaching back, taking breaks every so often um, to enable you to love whatever it is you do to exactly. enable you to persevere. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's mad just the way people build themselves up to take on whatever obstacles they put in front of themselves. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it's in, really, really interesting. Um, I'm going to throw another odd kind of cliche question, but <coughs> as an entrepreneur, and this is real cliche, just <laughs> prepping you here, um, but as an entrepreneur and as somebody that's locked into business and has, I imagine, loads of professional goals in front of them, um, what is happiness to you? Um, happiness to me is being able to live a lifestyle that I want to live. Um, so, you know, a lot of people come into entrepreneurship or start their own business because they want to make loads of money or, you know, they want to drive the Ferrari or that sort of stuff. And I think that's probably a little bit ill-founded. Yeah. For me, I would be happy to have, for me, some of it, there's an element of it that's about success and recognition of that success. So, you know, I get a lot of pride in what I've done to date and the fact I've set up the business and, you know, it's going in the right direction. But also, you know, success for me is being able to have a lifestyle where I can enjoy, like, some of my favourite things in life is travelling, you know, spending time with family and friends. Um, and I think if I can do that because of Pau Kau, that to me is success. Pau Kau doesn't need to be... Um, you know, I'm not necessarily saying the Paukau is the company, the company can get bought out for like, you know, success for me is Paukau getting bought out for half a billion or something, which would be great. <laughs> not going to lie. <laughs> but um, if Paukau can allow me to sustain a lifestyle that, you know, fits, or, you know, that are within my goals, which are, you know, that it's, like I said, traveling, you get to spend fa time with family and friends, and it gives you that freedom. That is one thing I have to say that I absolutely love about my business is the fact that, you know, I can go and live in New York for six weeks, and with the internet and everything, I can pretty much run the business as if I was in Dublin. Now, I'm going to poke you a little bit and pull you back to the question. So as an entrepreneur, <laughs> what is happiness to you? Now, you pinned happiness and then bridged over to success a little yeah. bit, which is interesting because this is a question that I think challenges loads of people. <laughs> and I always feel like a bit of a tool asking it. Yeah, yeah. But it's, a, it's an in interesting one. So again, I'm going, to, I'm going to pull you back to the start again and almost reset there and say, okay, as an entrepreneur, what is happiness to you? Happiness to me is getting up every day and enjoying probably what I'm doing. Sweet deal. Yeah. Simple. One sentence. <laughs> okay. No, it, it, it's, it's a real funny one because like you talked about, you know, perseverance, 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 perseverance. And ultimately speaking, if you're not happy, you can't persevere. 
Yeah. And it's interesting, you know, all these different aligned priorities, but I, I would start kind of as we talked about that you have to focus in on yourself mm. first and success will then flow from that. Yeah, if I can wake up every morning and I'm happy when I wake up to be like, cool, I can't wait to go to work today. If there's a day where I wake up and I'm like, oh my God, Pauka is an absolute mess. I can't deal with this anymore. Then I know that it's not the right thing to continue. Yeah. But right now, you're waking up every day. You're happy. You're excited coming into work. You're traveling. Yeah. Business is on the up. You're happy Pretty out. Much. But probably about half nine, there'll be have some crisis. But uh, we'll be <laughs> yeah. over it by 12. So <laughs> Interesting. Okay, really, really cool. No, it, it's, look, that's really, really nice to say because um, it, there's so many kind of interviews with, uh, with kind of really, really well-established entrepreneurs that I've looked at where they talk about <coughs> um, the most enjoyable time they had in business was when they were at the really raw stage in mm. building, but they didn't appreciate it at all. They yeah. were fixated on where they wanted things to go. Mm -hmm. But when they got there, when they got to the top of the mountain, that wasn't as fulfilling as they had hoped. And actually, when they took some real time out for themselves, they all looked back and went, oh no, the journey was amazing. But how sad if you're going through this big business journey that ultimately you'll appreciate, but you don't appreciate at the time. So it's really nice that you're in the position where you can say, no, I'm actually happy with the journey and where I'm at at the moment. It's going, it's, it's all going positively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. And I think uh, probably some of that realization probably comes from me forcing myself to take time away, as we said previously, and probably reflecting on, you know, everything that's happening and stuff and Jesus so you got a serious balance to it it's great well, <laughs> yeah. no well it's obviously reflected in the success that you ha had um so I am throwing all this positive at you but no I think it's I think it's really really cool yeah. well l look the two fun sorry the functional advice and, f and perspective for people <clears throat> following your shoes is absolutely key and to be honest I, I might like we'll tie this up in a second but I'd love to finish on that note that if there is there anything that that you've missed in terms of if somebody was coming up to you going look what advice can you give me? What value can you give me? Is there anything else you'd share that you haven't? Um, if, yeah, so if somebody was coming up to me, I would definitely tell them, whatever time you think you're going to turn around this, this in, triple if not quadruple it. Don't double it, triple it. Yeah. And whatever money you think it's going to cost, at least quadruple it. <laughs> quadruple it. Yeah, spot on. I can hammer, I can align with that <laughs> completely. Yeah. Uh, it's horrific finding that out the yeah. hard way uh, and people who said it to me in the beginning they were like oh you've very tight turnaround i don't know if you're going to get this turnaround in six months and i was like no no no, we will like it, it's fine it, like we should do but you know they, there's a reason why they were so far down the line <laughs> they had seen it all before it, isn't it weird that <clears throat> we all like the fact of the matter is, if you're doing personality tests, you know that we're all alike. Yeah. And as much as we want to think we're really, really unique, no, no. we're all pretty alike. Yeah. But we all think we're different, and we all almost hang ourselves at the start of a business venture where we say, we're going to bring in this much money, we're going to do this much success, and we're going to do it in this tinchy little time frame. Yeah. You're almost setting yourself up for failure on that basis. But if you do what you've advised and say, all right, look, this is what I want to do, it should take this much time, but let's double it or treble it or quadruple it. Yeah. It should cost this money, but let's double it or treble it or quadruple it. You know, you're being real. And I think when you're being real, you're setting yourself up for success. Yeah. Um, so it's key. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. No problem. Sweet to you. <laughs>